Welcome last few to days of the year. Tuesday. Yeah. What day is it? I don't even know. Tuesday the twenty seventh. It's one two two seven two zero two two. There are a lot of twos in every yep. one of the next couple of days. It's pretty wild. You know? There is. How come there's it's not cool. twenty two months in the year? That's dumb. There should be more months in the year. <laughs> I don't need any more months. And we can have year. 22, 22, 22. Did anybody ever think about that and how cool that would have been? Idiots. Missed yeah. opportunity. Right? Welcome to Tuesday, Miss Bree Camp Fanano. Yeah. That's a new one. That's a new one. I like it, though. I'll take it. I, I am glad to see your face. I do have a quick ask of you. Are you down? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shift so you're centered just in case the stupid thing does one of these. Yeah, then I'm you way know? over here. Yeah, we'll just get it ready. So then okay. then it, when it does it, I've been trying to like focus on, you know, when it zooms in. Let us jump straight into good news. Is that okay? Let's do it. Yeah, I'm ready for it. Let's go. So, so how about we both pull up uh, the old good news network? And maybe okay. we can we can like maybe you can we can bounce. You pick a story you love, I'll pick a story I love, and we can share it with the people. Um I'll run um I'll call right after Scoob wants to talk. I've given him my number like six times. <laughs> Just call me, man. Call <laughs> I don't check me. my stupid I don't check emails, I don't check Twitter messages, I don't check I do check LinkedIn messages pretty frequently. Uh although over the weekend I was out of town, so I didn't, but um, yeah, I want to make sure that people can get a hold of me. And definitely the quickest way to do that is to just text or call me. Um, good news network.com. Is it cool if I pull up, uh, pull it up or whatnot? And then yeah, we can both it. look and I'll be the navigator. You can tell yeah. me, you can go first. That way I can sort of, uh, get my bearings over here. Go for it. All right, let's here we it. go. What's the first story? Let's uh, let's scroll. Let's close some ads. Um, by the way, just as like a, a caveat before we, because at some point today we will almost definitely let loose on advertisements, and the trip, the trip side, <laughs> idiot, the flip side of ads is that it allows us to have things for free. So anytime you're concerned about the cost of something then one of the quickest ways you can offset costs of things is to have advertisements and sponsors. That is why these places do it. Having said that, some of them go a little overboard, but just keep in mind that the reason people have ads is because they want to keep it cheap and free for you. Yep. So let's get into it. You know, I'm going to want to hit that first one. What's the first one? The, the, what, the top 12 animal stories of 2022. Because I love animal stories and they make me feel better. Let's hit it. Let's hit it. Oh, and quit what is it and just... that? What is he? What is it? What is that primate holding? It looks like a ferret, but I'm sure it's not. It's probably like a honey badger. No, what is it? Um, I'm gonna go with. Um, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna can go... I take the caption off so we can see it better? Yeah, whatever you want. You're the boss, pizza sauce. Oh, okay, good. I just feel like I want to be able to see this more, so. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So what we have so far is another advertisement. So let's just uh, call it like it is and see if we can make that ad go away. Because I am a jerk about those. I don't actually know if I can. Yeah, they're going to keep it on there. Good for them. Yep. Uh, <laughs> nothing but love. All right. So we are not, they are not sponsoring this broadcast. We are just first, showing stuff. <gasps> first of all, I just want to point out that there's not like a. I think they could have done better with the structure of this. It's very confusing. <laughs> like, why it's wouldn't just they have like done a all scroller? twelve of the stories in their nest? Hey, here's the ones that I hate, it, it, and people get on these. Uh, first, I love the sloth. Um, it's the ones where it says you have to like it only gives you one slide, and then you have to click next all the time, and then there's throw ads in there, and at least this gives me a, a page I can just scroll down. I do like that. So yeah. to me, this is a little better okay. that I'm not getting next okay. on it. You know okay. what I mean? Well, yeah, I don't like the next ones either. I like a, I like a, a carousel sometimes. It's kind of nice if you're going to like jam pack it with pictures and content. Yeah. Um, but I have noticed that there seems to be like a trending move with websites to have them more vertical and have less pages. And I'm a little torn on it because my instinct was like, oh, this sucks. And then I was like, well, 
it's less clicking. So there's that. And you keep people on your main page. So as a, as a manager of the website, your analytics would be significantly better by keeping people on one page because everybody would spend more time on that one page. Actually, that's pretty smart. We might do that. <laughs> there you like, go. Because when you know when you look at like the analytics behind the scenes of a website and how well it's doing, one of the things it looks for is how long are people on each page. So right. Theoretically. All right. So sloth. We have a I'm sloth. I love sloths. Probably one of my favorite animals. Why? I think they're just so cool. Okay. They're but just, they're what just about chill. them is, is intriguing for you? Well, they I feel like everything they do is very intentional. Like they move really slowly. They take their time. They're just, they're, they're not like an aggressive animal. I, I'm sure they can be, but like they're, they're just kind of, a, you know, a relaxed, oh. chill creature and they just make me smile. I get it. So what this other article. their hands are cool. This is like a links to the original. So they've run these stories and that's just I like a combo overview. So there's this cool, this is pretty neat. Like I'm down with this. The cats would love that too. Yeah. Don't don't love the zip ties. I think you could have done better there. But other than that, it's a pretty cool set. Yeah. <laughs> pretty cool setup. Um, it says must be the sloth is friends with a zookeeper. And I needs morning zookeeper... cuddles. I love morning yeah. cuddles with his, with a sloth. That's cool. I feel All like right. a sloth sometimes. So I think you know, I can relate. That's cool. That's cool. This was clickbait on that ad or on that article. And oh these goodness. are some adorable cotton tamarind babies born. And I guess it's really good because they're endangered or whatnot. I'm sure yeah. that people like are trying to catch these and shoot these and stuff. And they're probably losing a lot of habitat. Where are they from? Uh, good huh. question. So this one was born in the zoo, which is definitely the upside of zoos. Trying to keep those, I guess. Yep. Um, doesn't doesn't say in a quick scroll what uh oh here we go uh, tropical rainforest yep yeah predominantly yep. in colombia mm -hmm. uh so maybe it's not super surprising that these poor little fell oh my gosh look how tiny they are they're adorable they Let's almost look get... like kittens they almost look like kittens that's that's a that's... both a terrifying and a very cute animal because if you look at their eyes it kind of looks like there's nothing there yes all right, so we've got sloths. We've got what are these things called? Uh, oh, tamarins. Tamarins. Okay, tamarins are pretty cool. Mm -hmm. This thing, I really need to know what the H this thing is. Pelican of some sort. It looks like possibly. Amy's about the sloth life. Yeah, I love sloths. They're so cool. My so son big. won me a big pink okay. sloth at an arcade in Branson, and I still have it. It's so Branson, cute. Missouri. Branson, Missouri. This is a um, shoe bill. What's a shoe? Is it is it a sort of like a, it's a bird? Storkish looking. Goodness, it looks like it's right from the Flintstones. It does. Rare, it's a oh, rare dinosaur bird. Oh. It's so cool. What did it do? Did it is it just being cool or what? It looks like they're trying to find it a, a mate. A mate? Oh. And they mate lifelong, so you. So we're now on a dating up. page. We're on a dating website at this point. Now we're trying to find a mate for this bird. This mother trucker is twelve pounds and four feet tall. Wow! And has an eight foot wingspan. Wow! The legs are really the legs and the beak, right? Like outside of that, it's kind of a turkey looking thing. But the beak and the legs are like wild, huh? Yeah, it's got that velociraptor face kind of thing. It's really crazy looking. <laughs> I wonder if Doesn't any it? zoos. I would. I would absolutely love to see this in real life. Yeah, same. What what zoo is it at? Shoe Bill. What zoo has a shoe bill? Oh, it is a stork. All right. It is what a stork. I was right. Yeah, I nailed that you. one. This bomb. No, my First. birds. Beep. Dude, yes. when I'm clicking, you gotta have the you gotta have the graphics right. You know what I'm saying? We gotta be. Uh, where's that little mm -hmm. fist? There we go. Boom. There we go. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> they can reach five feet in height and are classified as critically endangered, with only 3,300 to 3,500 mature shoebills still living in the wild. It's impressive. There's any in Tampa. Absolutely. Yeah, in Tampa. Tampa. There we go. Zoo Tampa. Yep. Is one of 
is home to three or four. But uh, it looks there's like a whole it's... Reddit. Oh, <laughs> San Diego Zoo's got one. There, you gotta go never... take a picture and send it. Do like post it. I want I should... to see it. I should see if I could hook up with a free pass there. That's actually one of the things I'm doing this afternoon with. I'm taking a lot of time to do some admin this afternoon. I have so many notes and people to follow up with. Yep. But I would love to find some places where I could broadcast live. And I hadn't even thought about the zoo because the zoo, you can do a family pass for like 250 bucks and it's really good. But maybe they would give me a scream and deal if I like shouted out the San Diego Zoo because it's the number two zoo in the whole dang world. Yes. Um, so and, there's an infinite number of wild doing... animals. And you're doing uh, uh, wow. uh, you're doing a segment on the shoe bill, and they have one. So I mean, let's do a follow up. Let's get some pictures. Let's let's get everyone to go to the San Diego Zoo and and check out the shoe bills because they are pretty darn cool looking. All right, that's I wouldn't what I was say they're. Get. I don't think they're pretty birds. That's kind of a cool shot right there. I would I would say majestic would be the but word. They're they're just they're fascinating. In the same that, way that a vulture is like kind of hideous at first glance, just the sheer size of a vulture and how they live their lives is pretty incredible. Yeah. Look at all the feathers. This is a great picture. It is. Like you really can nice. you can see Somebody's, so much detail. Wow. Somebody was doing a good job. And it doesn't even look like they're in a zoo for that picture. Just to point that out. It looks no. like it's just chilling on its own accord. So Dude, I really like these that. are my favorite animals is the rhinoceroses is that's my very favorite animal of all. Is it? Yeah, they have a whole bunch of these capybaras, which basically I like, like capybaras. Oh my gosh, cool. they're hideous. That's like a farmer's worst nightmare because it looks like a woodchuck, but it's the size of a dog. Yep. <laughs> like it would make holes all over the field. The naked mole rat. This is probably one that's of those. That's never going to live up here by me. That's for sure. Probably it's, survives like the. Wouldn't make dude, it. This guy kind of looks like me. I kind of have that fluffy thing going over in the corner when I don't have headphones on. The manga bay, like the little fluffy cheeks. You know what I'm saying? Manja bay. <laughs> the, they have honey badgers. Those things are pretty cool. Yeah, those are cool. But the rhinoceroses are my very, 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 very favorite animal of all time. Yeah, they're pretty. Because cool that thing looks like a tank on yep. legs. Yep. Pretty much. What's your favorite animal of all time? Favorite? Oh, I don't know. I uh, I have to say, when I was in college, I took some anthropology courses, and I found lemurs fascinating. I oh. like did a study on lemurs, and I think they're just the coolest thing. Um, they the just the, their their socialization and the way they can just they they have a very cool like family group system and stuff like that plus they've been around a, forever a and ever yeah lemurs ring-tailed lemurs are pretty if you've ever they, seen a san diego lemur. zoo has a boatload of lemurs there's lemurs. a ring-tailed lemur i love so them. they I think they have like um i would guess it's cool? probably close to like five acres worth of lemur territory mm -hmm. and they have multiple varieties and they all run around and it's really neat because rather than having the lemurs i think this is true don't quote me on this but i'm pretty sure the lemurs are the ones that aren't in a cage and not in like a traditional cage they have a big wire kind of like a fence but it goes it looks like netting actually because they're very yes. agile so it's yes. kind of like a metal like a net that goes over the top so they have a lot of space to do a lot of things precisely they're very active but they're very social and they're just really cool these ones are my favorite i think i like this one the best at the uh, zoo okay. the one with the white and red is so neato yeah although this guy looks like he definitely like had a bad trip <laughs> yeah he's like freaking they, out man. and they haven't changed in like hundreds and thousands of years they're like they've been around a really long time and they're like oh my gosh look at cool. his hand I know, aren't they cool? That's They've got like a, a, a what you call it thing. Thumb. I mean, you have it, like a thumb, but like there's a name for that, but that's not opposable. Thumbs. Opposable, thank you. May I read the fun facts of your favorite animal? Yes. Okay, fun facts of Bree Bree's favorite animal, the lemur or lemur, depending on where y'all are from. Oh, I met somebody I got to tell you about real, real quick in the end. Uh, fun fact the blue eyed black lemur is the only primate other than humans to have blue eyes that's nuts yeah did, did you know that i didn't know i the might black, have one time ago but i don't remember 
So the black and white rough lemur mother makes a nest for the birth and care of her babies, lining it with her own hair. That sounds like a very mother thing to do. Yep. A whole family of mouse lemurs could fit neatly in the palm of your hand. Yep. I'm struck by that. That means I could be running around in my house and I wouldn't know. Yeah. The next one will really blow your mind. What is that one? Take it. The name the name lemur is from the Latin lemurs, <laughs> which means spirits of the dead. This name was selected for the lemurs' silent movement. That's pretty neato. Yeah. I, I'm a big fan of, uh, say that again about the blue eyes, Amy says. So Amy, the blue-eyed black lemur, which I su- assume is like the common name for it, blue-eyed black lemur is the variety of lemur, and it is the only primate other than humans to have blue eyes, which is to say like we know dogs and such have blue eyes, but saying that other primates don't, which is kind of wild. Look at us being Mm -hmm. cousins with the lemur. That hand is freaky. I need to check out the mouse lemur real fast because I need to know if I see one because it seems like that mother trucker could, oh yeah, I've seen these guys. Yeah, they have some at the zoo, I'm pretty sure. Wow. Mm -hmm. People have them as pets too. That's terrifying. Which they should not, but... um, they're adorable and they're cute, and that's why people want them as pets. But they should not there be pets. Go. Should not have these as pets. But they are so cute. Yeah. I wanted to find one in some. I want to find. I want to find fun facts about a rhinoceros. Oh no, we gotta switch. Rhinoceroses are hella cool, but let's for a second switch to Amy's favorite animal because okay. the. Big this cats. is because this is actually something that I can follow up on because it's the San Diego Zoo. And the San Diego Zoo does have some amazing big cat scenes. Um, and my favorite is the snow leopard at the zoo because Ooh. of the environment they have them in mm-hmm. is double sided. So you walk down the middle of it and there's like cat runs over the top. So oh, you, can wow. get, you can get within like four feet <laughs> of, of a snow leopard and they're very active. The other thing that's really active is the jaguar slash panther, which is okay. also probably like eight feet from where you are behind like a, a whole situation. And I have my hair standing on and just thinking of that. This jet black cat is so beautiful, but holy hell, you would not want to see one of those in the woods. Woo! Yep. Um, we actually did a thing on Christmas where my son pulled up this picture. It was like, see if you can spot the leopard that's right in front of you that probably just looked just like that but it like it blended so well that you couldn't see it and we had long arguments about where it actually was because i was like i found it in like three seconds and everyone else was like no that's not it and it was like a everyone had different spots no it's over here no i'm like no it's right on top of the pile and it's looking here's its paw and they're like nope so we had (laughs) we had a lot of fun having like trying to figure out where exactly it was yeah, I love they, big they cats. Don't, they don't do it justice with the pictures here, but they have a ton of big cats at the zoo. Uh, they yeah. have like, I think they have four or five Bengal tigers. Oh, wow. Um, and How do the, the Bengal... snow leopards like it when they're not in the snow? Because, I mean, San Diego, there's not a lot of snow in San Diego. I would think that San Diego, the San Diego Zoo is actually like maybe five minutes from downtown San Diego. So, which is to say that it's proximity to the coast. The Pacific coast is... Not more than 15 minutes driving and probably like six to seven miles. So it stays very temperate there. And it's probably a really ideal place because you could regulate it hot or cold pretty easily for a lot of animals. Yeah. But I mean, without knowing more about it, I'm not sure. But they have uh, there's also some big cat rescue out here, too. Maybe we could do some big cat specials Um, Yeah. because I I also now that I have cats, I love big cats. Because I come home and I'm like, that's my buddy. <laughs> uh, I can't find any more about the big cats, so we'll have to look into the rhinoceroses. Yes. Because they don't really have a, a great page for their cats. But they do have so many. The Bengal, have you ever seen a Bengal tiger at the zoo? I'm sure you have. Yes. Right? They're incredible. I, oh, oh, so beautiful. It is such a discredit to the, to the race that is Bengal tigers that Tony the tiger is a Bengal tiger. It pisses me off. Yeah. Speaking of the we Bengals, have a, we have do... a really great zoo here called the Como oh. Zoo. 
Oh, yeah. um, it's, we have the Minnesota Zoo, um, but we have the Como Zoo. It kind of went under a lot. I got a lot of heat because the 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 space that they keep these animals in isn't as big as it probably should be. It's C-O-M-O, by the way, just in case you're looking it up. There you go. Um, Como Zoo Park. Uh, it, yeah. And in conservatory, that's what it is. Um, it is. Mm. That's the conservatory. It's beautiful to walk oh, through. I need it's to a, go there. It's so cool. Yeah, that's the conservatory, but there's also a zoo. Um, and it's very small, but they have polar bears. They have a lot of bears and a lot of, um, yeah. And they swim around and you can watch. Too. And um, they, they love it because we have lots of the cold. But we the giraffes are always really cool. And you can get really close to the, the tigers and the leopards and stuff. Um, yeah, you can be like right there with that that polar bear. They're, they're pretty intimidating. And big. actually, I want to I want to look up uh, take a, a slight diversion. Yeah. Uh, Amy is wondering if we can go in February. Uh, we could. It's kind of a drive, but we could do that. It's um, the Minnesota Zoo is probably a lot closer. Como Zoo is really right outside of St. Paul. Like it's still in the metropolitan area. It's in Roseville. It's it's super. That yeah. If you want to go to the conservatory, it's incredible. To walk through it. and they have butterflies and they have things that it's just so pretty in there. So it's right out of a there movie. There was a somewhere I went, I don't get maybe it was a Buffalo Zoo. Somewhere I went as a child, and maybe this is something I made up in my head. It's totally possible. But I remember seeing these polar bears at the bottom of this massive concrete pit. Yeah. And I, I've had nightmares for most of my life, uh, like daytime nightmares about falling in a concrete pit with polar bears and not being oh able my to gosh. get out. It seems terrifying. Yeah. Look at um, the rhino. I would, they I got love cool rhinos. feet. Look at how cool their feet are. Have you ever they're seen a baby rhino? Yes, they're freaking adorable. They're so cute. This is my one of my favorite things is watching babies rhinos run <laughs> because they're so funny looking. Like they look like a mini little, little tank. <laughs> they are really cute. They're so cute. I want a baby curious. one someday. I know. And then they, but they. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> it's so amazing. It's like a the size of a dog, but it's built like a freaking linebacker. <laughs> but it just looks like, I know it's so cute, but it just looks like, like you get a little closer to the people so that the adult can be pissed off that you're too close to its baby. Look I at, would not want to be standing there right now. Animal. Yeah. I just think that it's, it's so, I understand that the world is a complex place when it comes to killing animals. So it's not a judgment call, but it's just, I hope that they're able to continue to protect the species. Its horns. Yeah. It well, they take them off so people won't poach them. So part oh. of the, uh, part of the cons conservation behind rhinos in the wild is that they will actually trank them, dehorn them, and then that lowers the value to a poacher because poachers typically want the rhino horn because wow. it's like an aphrodisiac but don't they, in some Eastern don't medicine. They, oh, that's ridiculous. Don't they need it for protection if they're like... I mean, I, I don't fighting know. Fighting a I would, lion or something? I would guess <laughs> it probably helps pretty significantly, but the yeah. downside is, is like... If you were to put a lion up against or a, a lion against a rhino, even without its horns, the rhino probably has a chance. But if you put a rhino up against a gun and a poacher, it has no chance. Exactly. So. Well, that's true. That's very true. I have to tell you, I was driving last night. I was going to go pick up some tacos at this amazing, like family owned taco place. Um, their, their food is just so delicious. And we were heading over there. Uh, it was dark and uh, we were on these little roads. And all of a sudden, two giant bucks ran in front of our car. Oh I have no idea how we did not hit them. Literally, I saw them right, like they were right in front of our car. And, but we never hit, I, I don't know how we didn't hit them. It was so scary. I was like, why are you running about at negative five outside? Because usually they bed down, you know, it's cold. Sure. They bed down. They're not usually on the move at eight o'clock at night or 730 at night or whatever time it was um seven maybe it was just i was it was it was scary it was but anyway dawn. yeah we i grew up around a lot of white-tailed deer so i hate deer uh, so I'm, I can i just it. say i'm not a fan of deer yeah. at at all yeah. beautiful creatures um oh you yeah know, I, let's let's cheers to that because 
everybody who's ever watched the show knows that I am sometimes a little lukewarm. We'll bring this up in a second. A little lukewarm on animals from time to time. But yeah, I am coming around. I do love animals in the zoo. And I would love mm -hmm. to have my own little zoo someday. <laughs> like, that's the terrible thing to say. But I would love to be able to contribute to the rhino thing. And I just... I love rhinos. I just think that the prehistoric nature of a rhino is equivalent to an alligator, but a lot less scary to me. <laughs> yeah. And, and I just have, um, I have like this running thought about trees and old animals and old people even, and just all of the things they've seen that I haven't, even if they didn't actually do anything except stand in one place and not move and not interact, just the stuff they've seen pass in front of them whether it be birds or cars or houses come and go, it's, it's just amazing to think that some of these yeah. creatures and their, their instincts, like they're inside of them, their, their brain, their animal brain has been developing and progressing for, you know, hundreds and thousands of years. And they're so far, more, you know, ahead of where we are in some ways mm -hmm. as a species. And I, I think it's pretty fascinating. So when I see it, it like, the rhino is just an instant reminder of our place in the world to me. So I think it's um, it's pretty cool. But yeah, obviously they can't protect incredible. themselves. They're slow as hell. <laughs> yeah. So, um, oh, and I wanted to cheers animals. I spent the whole weekend with three dogs and we got along pretty well. Good. I, I made best That's friends. That's incredible. With that. uh, Copper who is just like Copper from the Fox and the Hound. That's what he looks like. Aww. And he was my buddy. He was like gangly and tall and clumsy <laughs> and really confused and lost all the time. So we were Aww. buds. <laughs> How cute. And, and Piper, who has been Will's little dog, it's a, I'm gonna, a leopard Kohi. Uh, I got to look it up. He found that he did a D. <laughs> nah, he did a, he did a DNA test. And he found out On that his it's dog? a leopard. Yes. Kahuli. I think it's a Kahuli dog. Let's see if I get that right. Yeah, it's a leopard Kahuli. Kahuli. Wow. Kahuli. And it's a very pretty breed of dog. And the other one is just a straight up golden retriever. But I have a lot more love for animals on this Tuesday than I typically do. So cheers, Animal Kingdom. Cheers. That's awesome. Yay. I got my coffee from this morning. Mmm. But it's giant. My son picked it up, and I'm like, I'll just drink it slowly because it's way too much caffeine if I drink it all at one time. So, yeah. Who made you coffee? Oh, Quinn went and bought coffee. Oh, good for you, Quinn. Thank you, Quinneth, yes. for contributing yes. to the cause. Yes, that's right. I can't wait to be best friends with Quinn. I think that someday we'll be best friends mm -hmm. because he seems like the kind of guy that could probably take a take a like younger siblings are usually the kind of people that will take a little bit of picking and poking because they'll give it back to you like 10 times harder yeah because they're used to getting away with everything yeah oh he's the baby he gets picked on a lot but he's you know i have a, a segment that i'm going to okay. insert called yes. tips with trevor t and Bree C. and the tip of the day is about coffee it just spurred a thought that i recently learned about and i thought it was brilliant and I may have said it, but it said you should wait for at least 90 minutes after you awake in the morning or from your nap <laughs> to, have <laughs> ca to have caffeine. Have you ever heard this? I have not. I know that you should drink like lemon water when you wake up before you oh, do anything else. So before we drink coffee, which is 90 minutes and we'll get to that part. But tell me why we should drink lemon water first. It's something about setting the pH in your body and it helps with digestion for the day or something. I don't know. It's supposed to be good. I don't know what a catahoula is. That That's sounds the like... dog's name. It's oh, 100%. Okay. That's, it's, it's a leopard catahoula. I got the name wrong. And he found it out when we just kept calling it a catahoula because it's a very fun word to say. <laughs> so it sets the pH? Yeah, it does something with like digestion and the pH and like how your body starts the day or something. It's um, I've always heard that you should drink lemon water in the morning. So well, we'll, we'll I don't. I have, but I don't do it like consistently. All right. So maybe... Um... You know, because it's really tacky to make uh, New Year's goals or whatnot, but it, maybe we could start thinking of some that we would like to do together because then we can hold each other a little accountable, but also like yep. test the results. There we go. <laughs> um, I've told you that I'm trying to go vegan-ish. So 
I don't think it's going to change from ish. It's just too difficult. Um, I haven't eaten real cheese uh, since I guess Thanksgiving was the last time I had cheese. But Good. Um, yeah, anyways, the coffee tip about 90 minutes is is straight brilliance. And it made perfect sense to me. And I would confirm for the most part that it's legit because I did it on accident today ish. And I feel really good right now. Like I feel very awake and I don't feel at like jittery from the coffee. And the 90 minute thing is the 90 minutes gives your body a chance to like naturally wake up. And it was something about like chemical hormone stuff that's released when you wake up, which yep. makes sense. Like your body has to completely change dynamics when it goes from being asleep to awake. Yep. And something about like if you have coffee right away, in your brain or whatnot is relying on the caffeine to wake up that the crash in the afternoon is so much worse than it needs to be. But if you allow your brain to naturally like get its gears going and yep. then you add coffee, then when the coffee wears off, you'll still be like riding that level that you started with. Okay. That makes kind of makes sense, right? Yeah, it does. So mm -hmm. I didn't overthink it. I'm just like, I'm going to try to do that because I don't want to feel like crap. I don't think I can make it 90 minutes without coffee the, or some kind of caffeine. When I get up, I get start to get a headache. I know I've had like, I know I've been like yesterday. I, I was like, I think I had too much coffee, had a lot of other things going on too, but I've been trying to, that's why Quinn got me this and he probably went at eight in the morning. So it was a, a little bit before I started having coffee, but it wasn't a super long time, maybe an hour I don't yeah. think I need, I don't think I made it 90 minutes, but it's fine. And I don't it's drink, a good goal. I tend to sip on it. He, mm -hmm. he gets iced coffees. So this is an iced coffee. So I have like, I can just sip on it and I'm not like really thinking about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, it's not, it doesn't have to, yeah. it's not like it was hot to start with. So I've definitely good. gotten better. Uh, like with my, you know, we've talked about how I was diagnosed with ADHD and mm -hmm. like, I'm trying medicines to try to regulate it and trying new like behavioral techniques. And it makes it a lot easier to not feel like, like I need all that stuff sometimes Yeah. because I recognize that on top of ADHD, like I really do need to be careful <laughs> because if you add coffee to an ADHD person without a little bit of regulation, like sipping, uh, it gets sketchy. All right. This is what Piper kind of looks like. Uh, that's, that's my Aww. buddy Will's dog that I spent the weekend with. Piper is much cuter, um, and a little bit smaller, but just, it's like a, 40, I love the Brindle. I love the Brindle. It's like a 40, 45 pound dog. Maybe not yeah. even that. It's like just a thin, light, full of energy, cat, like mentality. Very, yep. very friendly. That's a Catahoula yeah. pit bull mix is what she is. Nice. So she's got like a big noggin, like a pity, and like a, a very thin and slender body. Yeah. And then other Catahoulas have all this wild coloring too. Huh? Oh, I love isn't, it. So isn't cool. Isn't that so pretty? Yeah, it's so pretty. It reminds me of Jelly a little bit because Jelly has yeah. like all these speckles on her belly. Right. I just love her speckles. They just make me happy. And so... She's Brindle I, with the, the speckled belly. So it's cute. Oh, look at those ears. <laughs> yeah, just the variety of coloring. And they're all so, you know, I think that there's a chance that uh, um, the other dog, they haven't got the DNA test back from my buddy yet from, um, from Copper. But Copper has a little bit of this kind of coloring going on too. I'll show some pictures tomorrow maybe. But that's what we did is we spent our weekend in the desert. Yeah, um, that's what you're saying. They brought three dogs with them to camp. <laughs> so wild um my dogs were just happy that they had people around them so they were just like and just happy happy dogs and they were really good so i was really excited so uh i have a request yeah Ooh, do you mind was my if... stomach oh, that, did you hear that thunder that was my stomach nah, yeah nah. it was thunder it was like baby mm -hmm. i need to eat food today at some point <laughs> Please do. It's important yeah. to maintain one's energy. Um, I, I was had two bites maybe... of a cinnamon roll, but okay. Yes, you were oh, thinking. No, no. Did you make your own cinnabons? I did. Like from scratch? Yeah. Can you send me a picture so I can be jealous later, please? Yeah. I have I a, a, a similar request. Homie, you got to send me more pictures. I love I did have a little pro I know I didn't do a lot of pictures this weekend. I did have a little problem with the frosting when I was making the topping for the cinnamon rolls because 
it's powdered it's basically powdered sugar a little bit of vanilla and water to like make the sugary glaze that goes on the top mm -hmm. and i use i literally use like two teaspoons and it was too much it just i don't know though it it like expands into this watery thing and then i had to add more powdered sugar and more powdered sugar and then I ended up making pretty much it looked like a double batch size amount that I needed. So I threw half of it away because I wasn't going to just sit there and, and eat the leftovers. And they were totally doused in the sugary yumminess. So yeah, they were good. They're good. Yeah, that's awesome. We'll have to sh I'm excited. I don't think I have the picture ready right now because it hasn't uploaded. Okay. But, but Crystal sent me the recipe for what are called tea rings. Have you ever heard of tea rings? Like T-E-A no. ring? It's, it's like a ring of cinnamon. But oh, yeah, basically. yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, and, and I guess that that was, I guess I knew it. I just hadn't put it together. It was like a tradition that my grandma made for, for the family at Christmas. Yep. Um, which would have been a big deal because they didn't have anything. I mean, like, mm -hmm. they had seven kids in a farm, and they had, like, very yeah. little in terms, in the, in the early days. So mm -hmm. for them to have, like, a sugary treat, I'm sure, was a big deal. For oh, all yeah. seven kids to have, like, a little dessert. And Crystal has been making them like crazy to give away and remind everybody of grandma. And it was a really, really nice thought. And I asked her to send it to me so I can make it kind of Laura friendly and us friendly. And I, I'm going to, from now on, it's going to be called for me a grandma tea ring because she's grandma Tommy. Oh, there you go. I so love it. That's cool. I'll, I'll take some pictures as I make the grandma tea ring because I'm pretty stoked about yeah. the grandma tea ring. Um, I was going to see if there's any good pictures um, of the dogs, too, but not really. Not of just the dogs, just my lazy cats. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do some work in the uh, garden later, too, so I might be popping on with the surrogate gardener stuff. Oh, that'll be good. Um, because I'm I have... Be, like, ensconced in all of the uh, insanity that I have going on in my life, but yeah, um, I'm going to try to dip in. I, I'm My plan for today is to... Um, try to get a few phone calls and things done this afternoon. And then I'm going to dive into the creator lab a little bit, get some things rocking and rolling over there, set up tomorrow's creator lab. So everyone will have the links and everything for that. And then uh, I'm going to be hitting, hitting the uh, old Facebook since I haven't been on there in like five days. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to look at some guests and some creators and some people. Amy was really awesome at, um, like trying to connect me with people, which I love. So I'm going to try to reach out to the people that she's been trying to connect me with, see what I can come up with. Amy, I do appreciate it. So thank you for tagging me in things. I do see them come in. I just haven't been, uh, I haven't even been on my computer much. It's been tough so. the last couple, last couple of weeks have been very like, they've been really good. We just, I think yeah. myself included have fallen behind on, uh, like a, a good follow-up system. So I'm going to work on that today a little bit with yep. the follow-up system and do the same exact thing that you mentioned is kind of gear up for tomorrow's creator lab, but also make some personal con connections that I've already made. You know, yeah, I've been asking people if they want to be interviewed for like the last year and I've followed up with very few of them because it was like so easy to get people to say yes. I think that's why I like a lot of my um, inspiration or whatever, a lot of the push mm -hmm. to create this bigger deal that we're working on or that we've created is that so many people want to be in a little bit of a spotlight. They want a little validation to know that That's they're right. important. And the truth of the matter is, is they are. Oh, like, it's absolutely. Not a, it's not a stretch to like connect with somebody who is only a mom <laughs> and mm -hmm. hear about their stories of leading their family or their stories of when they were a kid of how they got to where they are and the struggles they had. And that stuff is really inspirational because a lot of people have struggles. <laughs> so absolutely they do. Yeah. Well, so we do have an interview this afternoon too. So do we? Because I yes, am we. having trouble getting. I don't have like anything on my calendar for this afternoon. So you don't. Oh, that's you... not that's not true. I have it with Kelly. Yes. Yeah, I have that on there. So we're going to be um, talking some John Ritter stuff and and fun things this afternoon with the with the foundation and the things that they've got coming up and we'll, we'll probably have that oh, uh, yeah. uh -huh. we'll probably have that it's going to be recorded at, but we're going to be we'll have that popped in uh sometime this week maybe friday to uh share with everyone so during our during our live we'll we'll play it so yeah i'm looking forward to it it's gonna be good really good yeah we we have a lot of a lot of interviews to get to 
uh, mm -hmm. for sure. I mean, there's so yeah. many, so many good people who have given us time. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about what we have going this week. I mean, it's a short yeah. week, but that's fine. I love, I love skipping, uh, love skipping Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday worked out. Okay. We, we had a little, a little encore and then we had a little live and I thought it went really well. And I was just, it was just the amount of time that I, that I had available today. I'm, I'm back in the saddle again, as they say, but, um, still, still a lot on my plate. So if I am slow to respond to people or just Please not just... as active, understand that it is because, yeah. uh, of the shit show I'm dealing with at home. And well, so... <laughs> and, and to just like, keep it, keep it pro, you know, like realistically, I, I can, I'm trying to do better too. So you can reach out to me yeah. if you have a question, like I got you covered. Um, but really, yeah. if you need something urgent, I can't imagine why somebody would need something urgently. And you know, I'm not a big fan yeah. of mis miscalculating what urgency really is. Urgency is life, death, family stuff. Mm -hmm. Everything else is kind of prioritized after that. So right. please, um, you know, know that that's how we roll here. And if we don't respond, it's probably because we're doing something like family stuff or we're on another meeting. But definitely hit me up too. I have turned on notifications on my stupid phone for emails and a couple other things yes amy first... yeah oh sorry you put the comment up and i just noticed it for the first time <laughs> just saying yes amy <laughs> um so anywho yeah we have a lot of things going on and i need to mentally shift that threw me off a little bit so sorry no that's fine i just have no idea what i was saying you were saying uh, how you <laughs> you turned you turned on alarms and notifications on some things and oh, yeah. turned it so, off on others. So, no, I'm no, sorry. no, it's never been on for stuff. So I turn notifications yeah. off for things like emails and, and crap that I don't want to deal with, which is why I don't get them sometimes. But I have turned on email notifications. I have turned on Slack notifications, even though we're not on Slack much. Um, I haven't figured out how to turn on notifications for Mighty, which is kind of a problem. It seems I to can not, walk you through do, it. Do you get push notifications for Mighty? I turn them off, but I I usually okay. have it available. Um, you can. They, well, so let's, uh, I can let's walk do you that. Through. Let's do that offline for sure. Yeah. Because nobody else probably cares too much, but I definitely want to get them. That way, people sure. can feel confident that I can, and I want to feel sure. confident that I'm equipped to to back you up. So. Um, the creator lab is going to get wild because I'm going to be scheduling some stuff to go out. Like I know that we need to engage a little bit more on there and I'm actually really excited to, because it's set up so well on the creator lab app for engagement mm -hmm. and engagement is really the name of the game in terms of what we are set up to do. Well, um, we just need yeah. to engage. So I'm going to be spending some time on the, the mighty app. I still need to learn a little bit about Braid. I don't know if I'm going to go all in on Braid, but I do need to spend some time on it. I need to hear from Jesse this afternoon. And I'm also going to be, uh, I might re-download Facebook onto my phone. I might. Ooh, I, that's a big step. I don't think I'm going to because I can get to it from my Chrome app. Like typically when I go on Facebook, I just bring up the browser. I just know, mm -hmm. I feel like Facebook leads, leads the charge of stealing data and like ruining privacy. I feel like they started it. So I make them pay for it by not having them on my phone. Also, Facebook is mostly personal stuff. I don't love it for business. I don't typically add people who aren't my family or friends on Facebook. That's yep. like Facebook is kind of my little bubble. On Instagram, you can follow me. Um, but we have all the things I need to get more into Instagram again. I've been trying to like ease back into it. Oh, Laura dropped a new song. Have you heard it I did. I oh yes, I did. I sure did cool. listen to it. It's awesome. She spent a lot of time tweaking it. She actually let me help a little bit with some of the sound. Like not not that I did them. She's the expert, but like to produce it a little bit and tweak it. And I had so much fun. I was so grateful that she let me be a part of part of that process. I was gonna ask what you did if like you got to be. I think like that part is so so much fun. So I I, I I'm a little jealous that you got to do all that because it's super cool. To, you know the to beginning see how music is made and how it uh, yeah yeah like the bells i yep. i told her she was like she has a, a mold sometimes but i listen to the same song so much that i mm -hmm. notice a lot of subtlety because i listen to like the same 15 or 20 songs at least once a day right <laughs> and so i'm always trying to get her to do drop she's like what's a drop 
And uh, she did the bells in the beginning and eased up on a few things. Like she had too much echo in the first version. And I thought she crushed the final product. I was very proud of her. It's beautiful. For all the work she yeah. Did. And I don't did, know if you know, Amy's listened to it not because I mean that's her favorite. It's it that's one of her. It favorite is her favorite songs. song. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's beautiful. Maybe we can go out on it today. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. I don't even know what she called it, to be honest with you, because it's California Day. Winter still. Winter California Day, I believe Winter it is. Winter California Day. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've heard it all weekend because she's been posting it all over Instagram. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, um, she did a great job. She did. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud of her. Um, she, she's, getting, she's getting good with some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. And it, it really is. I agree with you. I would love to be... Um, even a fly on the wall for that process. I just find yeah. the creative, the creative process, no matter what the outcome is, whether it's like a tangible sculpture or a, a musical piece or a painting or landscaping and architecture, there's so many creative endeavors that people get right. into And the process is what I have gotten so obsessed with is my own creative process. So I it makes me process. even more, more fascinated to learn everybody else's. Um, speaking of that, let's have a resource to go with it. This is called <laughs> the imaginative writing. This was one of my first, inter literally probably my first introduction, um, in college to creative writing. And so a lot of my creative process started with this book right here. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a text, it's like 400 pages, but it's very activity driven. So if you are someone who is a writer or an aspiring writer, I think that this is a really good one to get and you could probably get an old version like this and you could probably get for next to nothing. This nice. Is 2003. Um, I reorganized mm -hmm. my books because I really want to highlight different ones sometimes. Yeah. And you did a great job. It looks so neat and organized, but yet still has like uh, one of those pliers and uh, a drill and a few things, but it like, I like it. Do you, are those Thanks. tarot cards up there? Yeah, we haven't broke out the tarot cards in a while. Remember I know. We so we got the tarot cards. I've been cards. seeing 11s a lot, like 1111, like 1111. Oh, there we go. Yeah. If anybody would like to purchase this Trevor original, which I was quite proud of, then let me know. It's like a dark sun and a bright sun and like some black hole-ish type of thing in the middle on the shore of a lake, I think. Yeah. Plus or minus. Very cool. Ooh. Here's some other stuff. I do a lot of creative stuff when nobody's looking. And I love to draw like roots and plants and stuff. Oh, wow. Can't see it. Yep. There you go. Now I can see it a little so bit. So this is like a sunshine in an mm -hmm. arm and a plant trying to grow out of a caged window. Oh, okay. And it has a little writing with it. May I read it? Yes, please. Their chains may weigh you down, but your roots will keep you grounded. The bands may slow your dreams, but your roots will always feed your vision. That's pretty ah, good. I haven't read that since I wrote it probably. That's nice. Do you ever write things and then look back and read them and go, I can't believe I wrote that. Damn, that's good. Oh, frequently. I mean, you've seen me, you've <laughs> seen me crack up at myself all the time because when I'm in creative mode, I just let stuff flow out sometimes. And it's fascinating yeah. to know what a brain does. That's why the process is so interesting to me because we so frequently have i think the truth is is once you're in a creative mindset like mm -hmm. depending on the nature of it right but when you're by yourself you're just kind of along for the ride i think don't don't yeah. you think what is your creative oh, process yeah. like uh it definitely i have i have moments i have periods of time where it just like if i if i sit down it like it literally just flows out like I just, I can't, like, I'm just trying to keep up and get it all down. Like it's just pouring out of me. Um, so like, I love those moments. That's that, those are the magic, like magic moments when it comes to being creative, in my opinion. Um, it's sometimes it's, it's just written word. And then other times it's a, I get a, a very visual, like I've seen very, I'm very visual with something. It just depends when I'm, if I'm writing something, yeah, I've written things in the past and then I look back and I'm like, Wow. Like it just, I knew, I knew when I wrote it, it just like literally just poured out of me. So. All right. Have you written songs before? Um, I've played around with like a little poetry kind of stuff, but I haven't done a lot of it. 
I just get like do silly things with it sometimes. So yeah. It's fun. Something to do. All right. I'm trying to do the typing thing too. I'm trying okay. to get better at typing back to people with two people. Mm -hmm. It's uh it's tough. And you know who I've been hanging out with? I want to read some tarot cards, but I want to encourage everybody to follow Gabe Leal, who Oh yeah, um, he's so much fun. Gabe Leal on LinkedIn is kind of where he hangs out the most. And he's only got a few more. I think I don't catch him every single night, but I gather that his last couple shows are this week of the current format. Yeah. And he had me on, which was nice, but he has a voracious uh, comment section. Like Amy would be so happy in there yes. and you and I fit right in because <laughs> I know. it's like, it's like 15 people who are just like us who type feverishly while he's yeah. talking. And I have found true story. I found that my place in the comments is actually engaging with the guest because very frequently the comment section is just engaging with each other. Like Scoob and Amy do. <laughs> yeah. They were having last time when you were on it, they were having this whole entire conversation. Oh yeah. And I was like, damn, I love it. you know? Yeah. It's, yeah, it it's amazing. Crazy. Gabe has built uh, quite a following over there, and I feel very honored to have been on his show. Last night, he had a leadership development expert who was speaking oh, okay. not just a little of my love language. He was speaking really deep to my love language. Um, so go to go to Gabe's LinkedIn, and he'll kind of take you to the right people. But Gabe highlights a variety of individuals. Um, but the person last night's name was... Oh man, it's gonna escape me. Starts with a C, doesn't it? Carl, Carl. His name was Carl Watkins. Okay. It's a hyphenated last name, but Carl Watkins. And Carl was um, really, really generous. And his one of his like really defining factors is his vulnerability. Mm -hmm. They call him like the captain of vulnerability. And he told <laughs> us about nice. some of his struggles as a child and what that led to with alcohol and what that led to mental health wise and some of his struggles. And now he's like blooming as this leadership development expert who's also got some real deep experience in the world. So it was a uh, really, really cool. Like I was late for dinner cause I didn't want to leave. <laughs> it was really good. So that's cool. I'll have to check it us, out. I didn't watch, but yeah. Let us know too. Like, um, I know you haven't been consuming as much lately because we've been busy and now you have a lot going on with the holidays and with family. Um, I haven't been consuming as much until a little bit over the weekend. I kind of eased back into it. And, um, it was such a good, like last night was such a good reminder of why it's so important to consume other people's content, to watch other yeah. people's stuff is because you just get introduced to the wonders that are the world. Definitely. Like, which mm -hmm. are the people. So you want to do a little tarot card reading? Yeah, why not? What do you have left on your agenda while I uh, get these ready? What do you want? Uh, that was about it. Me? I mean, um, we've got okay. we've got some stuff that's coming up. Um, we're closing out the end of this year. Can you get the link for the Bree Treat sign up? Do you have that? I don't have it. I will have it today. I, I started working First on some priority. stuff. First priority. Yeah, I know. I got to get that in there. I will do that today. Um, I'll finish it up. I was trying to put a few things together on it and I've got to reach back out to Sarah. And now if hmm. Amy wants to go to Como, I got to, I would have to look into doing something like yeah, that. We'll yeah, see what we have yeah, going. Don't, don't worry about that. We got to get a sign up link first. So you're, you're like falling yep. down the rabbit hole of details, but people can't even sign up yet. So, well, I wanted sure to have some details first. on there. So we got, you have lots of details. I've heard your, your, whole yeah, spiel. that's true. <laughs> Worst case okay. scenario, we got to make a little change, but we got to okay. make sure people okay. can come I'll if they want to come. That's right. We need a digital sign up if you want to attend the digital Virtually, yeah. retreat. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we got to have the in person, but definitely that digital one. So we can start making sure people like I really want my mom and stepmom um, in particular to be able to come. But I think yeah. my parents in general, because um, everybody feels connected to you in a different way than me. You know, like mm -hmm. we all I don't know. It's. It's a huge honor, I've said this, to have my parents ever show up, right? But I think a huge yeah. reason that we are able to serve a variety of human beings is because you and I come at it from very different perspectives at times. Mm -hmm. And it's also really cool because from like a culture standpoint, you have more in common with my parents than I do because right. you grew up in a similar culture in terms of timing, even though it was in a different part of the country. Um, and I really love that, that we can connect with 
like I didn't want to build anything that my mom didn't want to be a part of. So the fact that you're here and help me with that connection means the world to me. And I would love to find a way to try to get my mom and stepmom at least um, involved in the Brie treat because yeah, it's going to be so empowering um, for the people. Like we are going to have such a, a strong vibe of empowerment, mm-hmm. I believe there that, you know, you got to start with people you love too. Yeah. So definitely. And my dad too. I don't want to forget about Alan. We forgot right. about Alan last week and he got on. Don't the do that. Oh, did he? Yeah. Good for him. Well, remember he, Oh yeah. You weren't here. Yeah. When, uh, the day that they all jumped in the day I talked mm-hmm. to my mom. Um, and then my dad was like, what about me? <laughs> I didn't know he was in the comments watching. <laughs> I thought your mom, I, I thought she's like, I I'm, she lost power, didn't she? She she did, yeah. And then she was like coming through a different way. So I thought she was using your dad something to, to get in. Or, she was know. using my stepdad stuff. Yeah, Dave's stuff. Um, I have four parents. I have so much parents. That's right. So I'm, I couldn't keep I'm, track of everything. But yeah. Some people are blessed and some people are lucky and some people have good fortune. And whatever version of that that I have, I have an extremely big version of it to have support from not one, not two, but four. You know? Four. How cool and is then- that? A gazillion cousins and and yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, a bunch of aunts and uncles. It's true. I don't know. How um, to, I like. I don't know what they call that. Like you know, like there's a gaggle of geese. So what would be the the? Is it a boatload of aunts and uncles? What what do they call a, that? How about a forest of family tree? Oh, I like that. Let's do that. Or a <laughs> tangle of family tree branches. <laughs> yes. A cluster F of Tommyans, Paynes, <laughs> Volts, and Drums slash Almers. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's do tarot cards. Tomorrow, uh, remind me tomorrow, I'll get okay. some pictures ready from Buffalo because we haven't talked about what happened in Buffalo from the, like the past five days, but they had a snowpocalypse, a Again? legitimate blizzard. Over the weekend, they had a legitimate like 17 plus people have died from it. Oh, my God. Because people got stranded on the roads. Yeah. That's what and they were worried about here. So, yeah. I... Laura's stepdad, uh, Jeff, shout out Jeff. He works at Wegmans, a big grocery store. Homie got back from a cruise one day, went into work the next day, got stranded at work for four days. Wow. He had to sleep in the grocery store for four days because Damn. he couldn't get home. So I'll try to get some pictures because there's some pretty wild. That's crazy. like it looks like it's from the seventies. Like we they haven't seen a storm like that in a minute. Pretty nuts. Uh, nuts. All right, let's see how we do this. So I think I'm supposed to pick a few cards out or help you pick a few cards out. I think that's like system one. Yep. I think we just pick one card because we're running up on time and I want to make sure we can get to everything. So you do a card and I'll do a card. Right or left? Uh, Left. This one or this one? Your left. Watch or no watch? Your left. Watch. Watch. All right. Uh, watch or no watch? No watch. Watch or no watch? <laughs> watch. I love this part. This is so fun for me. Watch or no watch? <laughs> no watch. Watch or no watch. <laughs> watch. <laughs> You're going back and forth. We're down we to down four to... cards. Watch right. or no watch. <laughs> Ooh. No watch. No watch. All right. So we have two one cards left. One for you, left. one for me. We have the Page of Pentacles. Okay. Is this one. And then we have this guy who looks like he's taking a dump and a bunch of horns around him. Oh, that's the the 10 is it one how many of them are there those are cups one two three get a get a count of how many one two three four five six seven eight nine of cups okay nine of cups yep nine of cups i'm looking it up you look up represents having high self-esteem and self-confidence it's a card of celebrations and parties yeah 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 a How good the- omen indicating that a relationship is in a good place. <laughs> well, mm. we shall see about that. Well, if we're only talking about you and I, I would say that that's a pretty fair statement. Yes, it is. I would agree. Yes, absolutely. You know? yep. So we're in this moment. Definitely. And we can Let's take stay it from what here. it is. Let's stay What's the here. page of pentacles? 
how there's got to be is there like a, a number of them is there a count something to count like a star there's one star is a pentacle a star yeah okay so there's one pentacle uh, a page of pentacles depicts a young man standing in a grassy field of blooming flowers in the distance behind him is a small patch of trees mm. and a newly plowed field on the ground like way by his feet the mountain range in the horizon signifies the upcoming challenges and obstacles the page must surmount along his way uh Let's let me let me dig into it a little deeper i'm gonna click on it um Make sure you save both of those so you can share them with your with your one person who might like these cards. Yeah. A little artificial boost. Uh, don't make me download anything. Please stop that. Uh, I can read the, what the I have page, have. Okay. Uh, the page holds a gold coin in his hand and examines it carefully as if to discover how to manifest even more gold and abundance. For gold and abundance. I'm all about that. Let's go. So I feel like... Um, on our journey to picking those cards, which was extremely bizarre, you were all here, here for it. It feels like a lot of positive vibes going into this week. Yeah. It says the initial stages of a creative project or venture. Mm -hmm. That's like right there. I would like to dedicate these two cards to Brandon, your son. Ooh, because okay. Brandon is out there hustling and i think the cups was like relationships getting better which i feel is there's some momentum in that direction and then this one which is about new fields and new creative endeavors which i also feel like kind of fits the bill and even though we drew these cards and i didn't plan on this i think we should dedicate today's tarot card reading to brandon if it's okay with you sure cool so yeah. make sure he knows what his cards are because we are dedicating and therefore foisting upon him. <laughs> we are foisting, we are foisting upon him the spirit of the tarot. There we go. I love it. I love it. What a great hour it's been with you talking about animals and tarot cards and um, animals oh, mostly. Oh. Yeah, I love it. It's been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. It's just what I needed. I like it. Good. I'm glad. Thanks. Well, if it's what you needed, then it's probably what we all needed because, True. you know, even though you are a unique human, many of us uh, have a lot in common because we fight similar battles and we have similar ups and downs. And yes. even though sometimes it feels like the Agreed. world is piling on us, I think the world piles on a lot of people. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as we go forth and conquer this Tuesday, I am extraordinarily grateful for your time and dedication to all that we do and to Thanks. me as a human and uh, and to Amy, to, to your dedication to Amy and all of the people who join us. Amy was really the only one in the comments today. And so for that- There Amy, was we, people popping in and out though. So- Oh but yeah, that's watching. Good. They stop in yeah. and say, hey, I like it. Thank you. Thank you for Talk being here, Amy. Yeah, thank um, you, Amy. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Tomorrow is hump day, jump day. So yes. you can guarantee after Creator Lab, I will be taking us on a ride tomorrow. Yeah. I'm ready. Let's do it. Yeah. I might even send out an agenda to everybody ahead of time. We'll see. I, I think that would be wise. Let's do it. Thank you so much for being here, Amy, and anybody else yeah. who stopped in. It's a, a great day to go crush Tuesday. Brie, any mm -hmm. parting thoughts that you would like to leave us with from like a meditative, let's go crush it sense? Give it to us. Mm, no, I, all I want to say is, you know, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, trust your gut. And uh, stay strong even when the times get a little tough. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for being here. Bye.